guys, my name is Bernice. I am one of the education interns here at the Watlin Center. Now, um, for this section, we are going to be on a, uh, going on a short hike looking for animal evidence. Now, there are some animals that we might find out here that we can actually see right now that they are diurnal, meaning daytime animals, or some that are nocturnal. And nocturnal, again, those are the animals that are awake during the nighttime and they rest during the daytime. Now, we are not going to uh, actually see them, but we're going to see the evidence that they leave behind. And sometimes the evidence that we can see are scat, tracks, different parts of their body, so exoskeletons and fur. There's all kinds of different evidence that we can see as we're walking. Now, um, as we're walking, I'm going to stop and point out everything that I see so you can actually uh, get a good look at it. And then um, I will give you a short explanation of how I got there or what animal left it behind. Now, before I get started, I'm going to show you one of my favorite flowers that we have out here at the Nature Center. This one here is called the Indian Blanket, and it's a native flower that we have out here. Native means that they are from here. So they weren't brought from somewhere else. They uh, started in the state of Texas, and they have been here. They're not taking over any other type of habitat. They actually belong in this habitat here. So let's go and let's see if we can find any type of evidence out here. So on our hunt for um, animal evidence, we came across this piece of evidence and here we're actually looking at scat. Now scat is a term that we use to refer to animal feces. So here we can see that on this piece of scat, we're seeing some bones in here and we're also seeing a lot of fur. Now the fur will tell me that this was left behind by a carnivore. Now, why would fur tell me that it was a carnivore? Any ideas? Well, one of the things, guys, is that a carnivore is going to be eating another animal, right? And if the animal can't digest the fur, that's one of the things that we will actually see in the scat. And that's what we're seeing here. Now, by the coloration of, this, of the fur in the scat, we can maybe guess that this might have been a rabbit that it ate. Now, we can't tell what animal actually left it because the shape, as you can see, is not very clear. Now, on here, we're also seeing another piece of scat that we don't know if it was connected or it was not. So, it's kind of hard for us to tell exactly what animal left it behind. Now, two of the possibilities of carnivores that uh, we have out here that could have left this behind could be a bobcat or a coyote. Now, on this side, guys, we can actually see a different sample of scat, but this one gives us a very specific clue that this one was actually left by a bobcat. If you look in this section here, you're going to see that the scat at the end is tapered off. This tells us that it's just like your regular cat that you might have at home. Um, they, um, any type of um, uh, animal that is in the cat family, you will actually see that at the end of their scat, they tapered off and that is a big clue again that this was left by a bobcat. Unlike the other one that we saw on that side that didn't actually show us any um, clues of what animal definitely left that behind. So here are just two different samples of scat. Um, it's not fresh, but it is evidence that there were some type of wildlife out here. Okay guys, so like I mentioned, sometimes we don't actually get to see the animal because they are nocturnal and right now we're in the daytime, right? So here are some of the evidence of a nocturnal that passed through this area and left its evidence behind. Here we're seeing the track and you can actually see two different tracks that they overlap. Um, this one, if you look at the direction, it was actually walking towards that direction. And then here we see a beautiful scat. Now, the scat itself, again, it's not complete, so I can't tell you exactly what animal left it behind, but by the shape, this will tell me that this was actually coyote scat. Now, if we go back to the track, if we look at it, the only thing that it will be missing for us to know for sure that this was a coyote, it will be the claws that we normally tend to see at the front of the track. But again, since this is not a recent track, we can't say that it was in a coyote or it was a bobcat. Um, whenever we see the recent tracks, um, that's whenever we get to see all the parts of the track. And here, since this one is already old and dry, we are missing those claws. But if we put the track and the scat together, that would tell us that it, it was a coyote that was walking through this area and it left its evidence behind. Hey guys, so here we're seeing more animal evidence. Um, if you look closely, you can actually see that there is a trail that a raccoon made. Now, by the size of the trail, we can actually see that it was a small mammal. 
like a raccoon. Now, the other thing that tells me that this was made by a raccoon is that we can actually see that there's some water back there. And um, as you can, as you know, raccoons like to go in there and try to find some crabs, different types of animals that they can actually eat. Now, um, again, if you look closely, you can actually see how he has come in and out so many times that the blades of the grass are already folded to where you can um, go in and out without a problem. Now, the other clue that he left us behind is the claws of different um, fiddler crabs. Now, the fiddler crab, this one is very recent. As you can see, there's still an ant climbing on it, trying to get some of the leftover food that the raccoon left. Now, the fiddler crab, guys, is one of the crabs that we have out in our wetlands, and it's native to our wetlands. Now, the way that you can identify a fiddler crab from a blue crab first is the size. Um, the fiddler crab actually has the male has a big claw and a little claw, and the female is going to have two little claws. But overall, the fiddler crab gets about this big. Okay, so we're not going to see anything like the blue crab that we have out in our base. Um, again, this is evidence that there's some fiddler crabs all throughout this whole entire area and a raccoon is enjoying every single one of them. Now, we're gonna continue to walk and see what else we can find on our hike. So here guys, we can actually see that the raccoons have some competition. Um, there is some evidence that an, another animal was here also eating the same fiddler crabs and then we also have a new animal that came into the picture and if you look carefully this is actually a crayfish or crawfish like the common name that you're used to hearing now here we actually see a pellet left behind by the yellow crown night heron which is the other animal that's competing with the raccoon for the fiddler crabs that we have here it's just like an owl they also leave their pellets behind and we can actually see all of the different things that it ate um, if i flip it you can actually see the bottom side of a fiddler crab now we're gonna move on to see what other type of evidence we might find on our hike hey guys so sometimes we actually don't get to see the scat that the animals leave behind but we can definitely see their tracks and this is a great example of a coyote track that we have here you can see those front claws very evident in that muck and they're very deep that also tells us that he was running now the coyote was going towards this direction and you can see all the shrubs back there where maybe he found a delicious meal back there and that's why he was headed that direction now again these are coyote tracks and the coyote was walking towards the shrubs now follow me this way and we're gonna get to see another animal that is again nocturnal but this one's very cool because a lot of people misunderstand it and you tend to be a scared of them or you just don't like them because they look nasty this one here was left behind by an opossum and yes, I did say the O because they are opossums. They're not possums. We live in Texas, but that doesn't mean we have to call it the, the wrong name. These are opossums. And he was walking actually towards it, this direction. So you can see the tracks that he left behind. They kind of look like weird hands in a way. But if you have ever seen them climb, they need to have the, somewhat the same structure as we do to be able to climb really well. Um, their tail, they don't necessarily use it to hang upside down. What they actually use it for is that kind of like a third arm. That way they can grab onto branches um, and, you know, in case they're fixing a fall. Now, if we look at the structure of their track, you can actually see that they have an opposable thumb right here. And you can see that on this track here, that also helps them to be able to balance as they're climbing. Thank you for joining us on our short hike at the nature center today now you know what some of the evidence that we might find outside are um, next time keep an eye out for it make sure that you look for some tracks and scat thank you again for joining us